In this video, I am going to show you the easiest method on getting started with ESP IDF programming for ESP32 using VS Code extension. Hello everyone, welcome to IoT Frontier. My name is Hariharnath. In this video, we'll look into step-by-step -step guide on how to get started with ESP IDF. First, you'll learn the basics of ESP IDF and its features. Then, we'll configure the VS Code with the extension of ESP IDF to program ESP32 using ESP IDF. Finally, you'll also see a practical example of writing the program on ESP32. So without further delay, let's get started. So first, let's try to understand what is ESP IDF. So in the official documentation, we can see ESP IDF is expressive official IoT development framework and this is suitable for ESP32 series and it is having a self-sufficient SDK for generating or creating application development. It is mostly written in C or C++ and then it, you can see some of the features like it is open source which means that it is right now freely available on GitHub and it is having well-defined release processes which means that it is production ready. And we can see feature rich software components are available such as it has provided RTOS, networking stack, protocol implementations, helper methods, etc. And it also has an extensive documentation for its software components. Now you can see some of the software components that are already available in ESP IDF. So these are very advanced software components that are all already available as a features. So I'll provide you the link of this website so you can look into more of this. Now let's look into the ESP IDF framework. So consider you are writing a program and the project is written in C and you will be using some of the components API and tool chain of ESP IDF to build that project into application. And this application is then uploaded onto ESP32 board and then we'll be having a method to monitor what is happening in ESP32 after we have written the programming. Next, to get started with ESP IDF on ESP32, you need few things. Those things are clearly mentioned here. So first, you need to have ESP IDF, toolchain, project. And what is toolchain? Toolchain is used to compile code for ESP32. And the build tools will be having CMake and Ninja to build a full application for ESP32. And ESP IDF is nothing but it contains some APIs which means that software libraries and source code for ESP32 and scripts to operate the tool chain to build the application. So here you can see the steps. So first you will be having in our IDE you will be having this ESP IDF with tool chain and the project that we have written is built using this tool chain and it is created as an application. Once the application is created, it is to be uploaded onto ESP32 using the USB. So now to install ESP IDF onto a Windows system, let's go further. So what I can do is I'll be using IDE method. So here I'm using VS Code extension method. So I'll click on this and it will be opening a GitHub page. This GitHub page will have step-by-step -step tutorial on how to first download VS Code and then install the extension. So you can click on the VS Code and click on download. So I have already downloaded. So first I will try to open VS Code. So once you have opened the VS Code, you can also follow the steps here. So we have downloaded VS Code and then we need to install some of the things. So what you can go is click on extensions. So to click on extensions, you can go to left side menu and click on this extension and type ESP IDF. So you can see ESP IDF by expressive system, click on install. So it has installed within a second. Now even you can find the steps, whatever you have seen in GitHub here as well. So next thing that you need to see is you need to see this icon in the VS code. So
so you can see below you can find esp idf explorer you can click on that once you click that it will be having so many commands that are already there and in advance also it has some commands that you can look so now we will see one by one which are needed so now what we need to do is from the command list we need to first select configure esp idf extension so under the advanced you can see configure esp idf extension click on it so it will try to load and try to open a new page so you should click on express so here you can select github and the version you can take the latest release version and you can leave as it is whatever the container uh, directory as well as the tools path you can leave as it is and click on install so now it will take 5 to 10 minutes depend on the speed of the internet as well as the server so let this esp idf installation be completed i'll fast forward this now we can see the installation of esp idf extension is complete and the configuration is also done next thing is we should open examples so you can click on left side advanced show examples or you can click on this so i'll open here show examples so it will try to load examples using our path so here we'll be having so many examples like blink hello world sample project and then bluetooth related then gpio related and wi-fi related so what I'll do is I'll use Wi-Fi and I'll try to scan the access points around me. So I clicked on this scan. Next thing that we need to do is you need to select a location for creating scan project. Click on this and here I'll search for ESP and select for new project. Now this project has been opened. So we can see a new VS code window has opened and it has created these folders. So inside main you will be having scan.c and this is the code that they have written and you will be having some other uh, project build as well as cmake list and uh, readme etc. Now we can again click on this ESP ID of explorer and then so first we need to do is we need to select the port to use so currently no serial ports are available because i haven't connected my esp32 so let me connect esp32 via usb so now i have connected let me again run this so you can see com3 for example even after connecting your esp32 you don't see the com port then you can go to device manager and here under the com ports you can try to look into like if you have any com port available or it is showing some warning if you don't have then you need to download silicon labs cp210x drivers so how you can download is so you need to search for usb to uart bridge vcp drivers on the google and i will also provide you the link in the description so you will be opened uh, into this page next click on downloads and click on this vcp windows so you can click on that and you can download so once you extract it you will be having these options like x64 x86 so based on your uh, configuration of the os you can click on them and install the driver once you have installed the driver you should be able to see the port so now I will select the port COM3 and it has been selected. Next thing is I need to select the project configuration. So if I don't have any, I can leave it as it is because I'm using example code. So I'll leave it as it is and I'll set up the device target. So which means that whether you're writing this code for ESP32 or other series, then I'll use ESP32 and here I can use if you have different kit you can use that model but I have basic one so that I'll use ESP32 chip. So I can use three steps like build, flash and monitor but I'll try to show you only one by one. So first 
it is trying to do some setting up of the tar device target once it is done i can click on build project so it is using this ninja.exe to build this project for the esp32 so in basically it is trying to convert high level programming language to machine level programming language so it takes nearly 2 minutes or depends on the number of files that you have or the code that you are using and once you it says building complete you can proceed to the next step so now you can see build is successful next we need to flash the device so click on flash and use uart so it is trying to connect with usb and then trying to write so you can see the percentage of progress that it is writing now it has written the code the flashing is done now we need to monitor so if you monitor you will see all the logs that it is producing for example right now we have written a scan code so it should show different access points nearby the surrounding of this chip so for example you can see one hari wi-fi and this another ssid and what is the authentication mode as well as other details so it can see only two APs that it has scanned so this is how you can run a program onto ESP32 using ESP IDF with the VS Code extension method so that's all for today's video I hope this video has been informative if yes please type helpful in the comment section below your support means a lot to us and helps us keep creating more content like this so please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another interesting video.